this video we'll be looking at uh, how water actually moves across the plant. Uh, we'll be focusing a little bit more about how the water moves from the uh, soil surrounding the roots into the root and then from different parts of the root into the xylem itself and then transporting it uh, up the xylem to the rest of the plant. So we'll be focusing on how it works in the roots. So let's, first of all, let's have a look at the structure of the roots again. So remember, we've got different parts of it. The outside of it is called this uh, uh, exodermis. Then we've got the this part, the, the ring surrounding it, will be the epidermis. Then we've got the cortex inside and then the endodermis uh, on the very inside of it. And then the xylem is this uh, cross shape. Uh, structure inside it and the phloem normally uh, is kind of around the xylem but we're not going to draw them uh, in this particular structure to avoid confusion and we'll look at it in four different uh, kind of three to four different steps so first of all is about uh, once the water moves from the soil into the roots by osmosis then we say that there are pathways there are two particular pathways that move them from the exodermis all the way uh, through the epidermis and into the cortex so there are two methods there then uh, the third step would be about how they move uh, across the endodermis, so across this particular layer itself. And then about the fourth step is about how they move from the endodermis into the xylem. So that is the fourth stage. So we're going to separate them into these different stages. So we say in the first two bits will be about how the water moves across the root cells. Now actually I said put, I put the word root in brackets here because actually uh, the water moves using these two pathways in any other part of the, cell, uh, of the plant as well. So either it is in the leaves or uh, in anything else, they also use these two pathways. But here we're going to focus a little bit more about the roots. So here imagine we've got the two cells, the two plant cells that are kind of adjacent to each other. And we've got the cell wall on the outside of that, the cellular cell wall, the uh, plasma membrane, which is now uh, very much uh, stuck onto the cell wall. And then we've got a gap in between, and this gap is called the plasmodesma, which is the gap that, uh, that links the cytoplasm together. However, there will also be a sort of a uh, plasma membrane across it. It's just simply saying that the cell wall, there's a gap in the cell wall here. And we, th we say that there are two pathways. The main pathway that water uses to move across cells would be in uh, the method A, which is mainly in the cell wall. And we call this the apoplast pathway. So they move across, uh, they move through the cell wall and usually by, uh, by tension actually. It's about the attraction force between the water molecules. So we'll talk a little bit more about tension later on. So that is the main pathway that the water moves because it's just the simplest and the easiest pathway without much in the way of the water molecule. So it's the quickest way. The other method, uh, which is uh, also used quite often in under certain situation will be the simplest pathway. So we say that the simplest pathway, as you can see from the diagram, is about the movement of water through the cytoplasm and actually the plasmodesmata as they go from one cell to the next. You will see that I put uh, diffusion next to cytoplasm because when the water is moving through the cytoplasm itself within one single cell, that is diffusion. It's only when the water is crossing uh, into the next cell through the plasmodesmata that is osmosis because uh, the plasma membrane exists in the plasmodesmata. So when the water moves, it's going across the partially permeable membrane, which is one of the criteria for the movement to be osmosis. Keeping in mind the definition of osmosis is the net movement of water molecules down the water potential gradient uh, through a partially permeable membrane. So when the water is simply moving through the cytoplasm, that is just diffusion and then osmosis when it comes through here. So these are two main pathways that water use to uh, move across cells. Now there's actually one other pathway which is not mentioned in the book, which is called the vacuole pathway, which is about how the water moves from the va one vacuole to the next, but actually that is not as commonly used, so we don't need to worry too much about that in this particular case. Now imagine the water is using these two pathways to move from uh, from the root hair cells here and all across the exodermis and the epidermis and the cortex. And then now they're kind of coming close to the endodermis. Now the endodermis have a very specific uh, structure to it. So now we'll have a look at step three. Now in step three, we said the water moves across the endodermis and we need to know specifically how they do that. Now imagine that this particular cell here, this first cell, is a 3D drawing of the endodermal cell. And this cell is kind of like one of the cells outside, so it's maybe in the cortex or something, but it's not an endodermal cell, that's the point. So imagine the water's coming in this particular direction 
from uh, the root hair cells is coming in, coming in from this side. So we need to look at this one in this picture a, a, with a bit of a 3D idea. So it's coming across that way and then it's reaching and entering the endodermal cell here. It's traveling through the uh, apoplast pathway, so it's now still in the cell wall. And then now for the endodermal cell in the cell wall embedded within it, uh, it's actually got this sort of uh, wrapping thing and that is called the Casparian strip. So imagine if you've got a, a present uh, that is coming in a box and then sometimes you might see that there are ribbons out on the outside of the box. So kind of imagine like the Casparan strip is like the ribbon around the box except that this time the ribbon is embedded within the wall of the box rather than, rather than being on the outside of it. So the Casparan strip is embedded within the cell wall. So what that means is that when the water is traveling through the apoplas pathway and coming to this point of the endodermal cell, it will meet, it will have to come face to face to the Casparan strip. Now what makes the Casparan strip so special? It is made of a substance uh, that is called suberin, and now suberin is quite waxy. Now if you remember that on the surface of a leaf we also have a waxy cuticle, and the idea is that if a substance is waxy, it's waterproof. Now what does that mean? The water has been traveling through the apoplast pathway all the way through uh, to the endodermal cell, but then it meets the Casparan strip, which is waterproof. So that means the apoplast pathway no longer works. So it has to go through another pathway, which we know from the uh, previous picture here is the Simplast pathway. What that means is that the water is now forced to go uh, from the cell wall into the cytoplasm itself. So imagine as if the water is coming in here and it goes into the cell. And when it goes down, it travels through the cell uh, carrying forward. And then some of them can actually come back up as well. Uh, after a certain point, so they can go, they can go into the cell, uh, through the plasma membrane, and into the cytoplasm, and carry on in the simplast pathway. But what is the significance of this? Why is it so important? So the idea actually here is to force the water to go through the uh, across the plasma membrane. Now, keeping in mind that plasma membrane is selectively permeable, what that means it chooses what can go in and out based on the size or the charges or some of the properties. So keeping in mind that in the soil is not just the water and the mineral ions, but also sometimes they might have some toxic chemicals in it. And they have been absorbed and they travel along the cell wall because the cell wall itself is fully uh, permeable. So it doesn't have any selection process at all whatsoever. But then if the water is forced to go into the simplast pathway, they will have to go through the plasma membrane. So the water and mineral ions will be selected to go in, the toxins will be filtered out. So this is almost like a mechanism, a defense mechanism for a plant in this case. It's, it's like the customs. It, it stops the bad things from going into the plant itself. That is step three about how the water actually move across the uh, endodermis, which is the surrounding bit. And then we mentioned how it's got a Casparan strip, so we'll add that onto our diagram. So the Casparan strip basically stops the toxins from going in and, all the, and allows the water minerals to go into the plant itself. Then it's about how does the water actually get loaded into the xylem. Right, so now we'll look at step, the final step here. So now if we zoom into this, uh, to the structure of the center of the root, basically, so we've got the endodermis around it and then the xylem. The phloem normally exists around here, but like I said, we're not gonna draw them to avoid confusion. So actually the way that it works, there are kind of like two, three steps. So the first thing to notice is that now the water has gone through the endodermis, it's about how they move it in. And actually in the endodermis, they would move the mineral ions into the xylem first. Uh, rather than the water going in first, right? So they move the ions into xylem by doing active transport. So they use energy to do this. They will then decrease the uh, water potential in the xylem. In comparison, the endodermis has a higher water potential instead. And because of that, the water will then move into the xylem uh, down naturally by osmosis because of the difference in terms of the water potential. So the water moves into xylem by osmosis down the water potential gradient, kind of like following the ions here. Now, once they've done that, actually that movement of water uh, into the xylem would generate something called the root pressure. And because of the root pressure, it would uh, push the water up the xylem uh, itself. So actually it's about how it actually forces the water going upwards to the rest of the plant. And that, in combination with uh, the effects of transpiration, then therefore the water would be drawn up uh, the, the xylem from the roots. 
And this is how water actually moves from the soil into the plant itself. So just a quick recap. In the very beginning, we get the water in the soil. So it gets absorbed into the root hair cells. And then the water moves across the cells by two pathways, which are the apoplast pathway and the symplast pathway. The apoplast pathway is about how the water moves across the cell wall by tension. And the symplast pathway uh, is about how the water moves across the cytoplasm and the plasmodesmata from one cell to the next. And actually this happens in, uh, in other parts of the plant as well, with apoplast pathway being the preferred pathway most of the time. But when they move across the different uh, layers of the roots, they will get to the endodermis. And when they get to the endodermis, the endodermal cells would have a casparin strip around them, which is made of a, uh, a chemical that is waxy and waterproof called suberin. And because suberin is waterproof, therefore, it means that the water that has been traveling by apoplast pathway will be forced to go into the simplest pathway uh, going across the plasma membrane. And because the plasma membrane is selectively permeable, they will then be able to filter out all the toxins that were originally traveling uh, through the cell wall, and now they will no longer be able to go into the uh, inner parts of the plant. So this is a defense mechanism. And once the water's uh, gone through the simplest pathway, they can either carry on with the simplest pathway, and sometimes they can come back up uh, to the apoplast pathway as well. And the last step is about how the water moves from the endodermal cells into the xylem itself. And actually the way to do that is that the uh, mineral ions gets moved from the endodermis into the xylem by active transport first. That step would decrease the water potential in the xylem uh, in comparison to the endodermis, which has a higher water potential. Therefore, the water will follow and move into the xylem by osmosis down the water potential gradient. Because of this movement of water into the xylem, that generates a root pressure, which then pushes the water up the xylem uh, and to the rest of the plants. And this is the transport of water across the plant.